Welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. On the back of our video on our five favorite features of Adobe Illustrator, we're going to be looking at the five things we dislike about Adobe Illustrator. We're also giving away a free Illustrator file with customized text that you can change to your liking as we'll show you at the end of this video. So I'll pass you over to Rory now who will run through these points on the computer. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into Illustrator, our first issue with the software is the ability to change the default font and swatch options for a new document. Now before you start jumping in the comments, we know that this is technically possible by editing the default profiles for each of the document categories within Illustrator. However, this is a pretty annoying workaround and if you want to be changing this regularly, it's just not that practical. So for example, I'm just going to jump into a web preset document. I always like to go for web large as it's a nice large artboard to work with from the off. Now no matter what document I choose here, if I select my type tool, it's going to default to Myriad Pro regular 12 point. If I simply click within here, you can see this text is very small against this artboard and no offense to fans of Myriad Pro, but it's not the nicest typeface. This also goes for the default swatches. Although we have a decent range to choose from here, it would be nice to add custom swatches and have them apply to all new documents as well. I would personally love it if they were somehow linked to the custom workspaces we can set up within the software so that they can be easily changed depending on the projects you're working on at any given time. Our next dislike is also related to creating new documents but this time specifically new web preset documents and that's something called pixel grid snapping. Now this is turned on by default on all all web preset documents and you can tell if this is turned on by the icon in the top right hand corner and what this does is it will automatically try to align your objects to a hidden pixel grid. Now for the most part this isn't a big issue especially if you're designing at larger sizes however if I zoom right in here and draw a very small circle for example what will happen is if I try to create another line here I'll just create a line at a 45 degree angle if I try to line this up and what I'll do is press Command Y to go into my outline view so we can see this more accurately. If I try to line this line up perfectly with this circle, you can see it's not snapping properly. I'm not able to do it because it's jumping from pixel to pixel. So this is obviously quite an extreme example, but this can cause issues with precise alignment, which is obviously very crucial when we're dealing with vectors in the software. If I turn this off by clicking the icon in the top right hand corner, I'm no longer constricted by this pixel grid and I can make much more precise movements. Ideally this feature would be turned off by default and it's something that you could turn on if you need to instead of the other way around as I always find I'm having to turn this off before doing anything else in the software. Our next dislike is essentially a feature we would love to see added to the software and that's the ability to rotate a canvas. Now this is something that would benefit those using graphics tablets more than anything but is still applicable for those using a mouse and keyboard when we're using tools like the pencil or brush tools and we're trying to be more freehand. Now think of this in terms of when you're sketching on a bit of paper, you're not constrained by the positioning of the paper. You can move it around to create smoother flowing lines when you're drawing. A similar feature in Illustrator would really help to create more accurate lines. This is something that you can also do in the likes of Procreate as well and it does make a big difference when doing this type of design work. The next dislike again is something that we would like to see added as a feature, but that's the ability to create live mirrored objects. So what I mean by that is being able to draw something that automatically gets mirrored on the other side while you're drawing it. This is something that again is a feature in a lot of other software packages, but in Illustrator you have to use a workaround which isn't exactly efficient. To do that you can create a rectangle the size of your artboard. I'm going to go over to my layers panel and select Select the circle on the right hand side which denotes that we have the layer selected. Go up to effect, distort and transform, transform, click on the reflect x-axis and change the copies to 1 and click OK. Now what's going to happen is the center point of this rectangle will act as our point of reflection. Now what will happen if I select my pencil tool for example, I can start drawing on one side 
and it will automatically get applied on the other side as well. But this is far from an ideal solution for this type of thing and mirroring objects is quite a common process in this software. Last but not least, our final dislike again is in the form of a feature that we would love to see added and that's the ability to apply a range of textures to objects. Now as it stands, the best way to do this is to import different texture packs, images or vectors and applying them manually in the software. And as it stands, the only way of doing something similar in the software is going via our effects. And under pixelate, we have things like mesotint, which we have a few options to choose from, but really nothing special. And it doesn't always produce particularly nice results. We also don't have much control in the appearance of these effects as well. And to get the most out of the them, we have to use them in combination with the image trace feature. So having a way of being able to apply a bigger variety of textures to our vectors would be great. We're already seeing this with third party plugins like Astute Graphics, so this should be possible. So that rounds up our five things that we dislike about Adobe Illustrator. These are just some of the things that we would love to see improved in the future, and we'd love to hear what you think should be changed as well. Now as Ross mentioned at the start, we have a custom text template file that you can download and customize yourself. We've set up this custom text so it can be easily edited. All you need to do is select the type tool. I can double click into this and type out whatever I want. I'm also able to go into my character settings and I could equally change the font to something else and format it in any other way that you would be able to any other text. So download it and have a go and see what you can come up with. So there you have our top five dislikes of Adobe Illustrator. Fingers crossed at least some of these things will be addressed in future versions of the software. But be sure to let us know what your bugbears are with Illustrator in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how to achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for. And ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.